Nothing's more exciting than when the opening credits of a movie say, inspired by true events. If you're a history buff, you've probably opened the Google app on your phone during movie time to research if a fact or two were historically accurate. It's no surprise that Hollywood takes some liberties to make their movies more dynamic, but some films took it way too far. The movie 300 probably made you marvel at the sheer force and glory of the Spartans. I mean, it takes a lot of courage for an army of 300 highly outnumbered men to take on such a strong adversary. The movie is based on a comic book by author Frank Miller, and it's supposed to retell the Battle of Thermopylae. This epic battle is considered an important bit of history of ancient Greece and the Persian Empire. If we were to play a game of spot the historical inaccuracies, the first one is pretty obvious. There were no muscular battle rhinos domesticated by the Spartans in real life. And of course, the men didn't fight bare-chested. They wore some pretty heavy protective armor. And last but not least, they weren't just 300 men, but rather thousands, since the Spartans were supported by the Greeks. Who doesn't love space movies? I'm not talking about Guardians of the Galaxy, but rather the ones that tried to depict more realistically an astronaut's struggle in space. Thing is, most outer space movies are inaccurate and highly romanticized. Chris Hadfield, a real-life NASA astronaut, says the movie Gravity with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney is very far from the truth. In the movie's opening scene, astronauts are repairing the Hubble telescope when they go through an asteroid debris field. Their space shuttle starts to turn quickly and gets out of control. So, Sandra Bullock's character unstraps herself from the shuttle only to be vacuumed vigorously by a non-existent gravitational force. Let's get something clear here. If such an immense vacuum force was real, it would have vacuumed the piece of shuttle she was attached to in the first place. The unstrapping looks like a way to add more drama to the scene. If this wasn't enough, the entire dialogue is based on asking Houston for help. As if Houston, the control room down on Earth, had any chance at helping them. Another space movie that will keep you on the edge of your seat is Interstellar. Its writer-director, Christopher Nolan, is known for creating difficult-to-follow yet emotionally compelling sci-fi movies. Not a lot of people know this, but Interstellar is inspired by a theory from physicist Kip Thorne. Thorne was trying to figure out what happened to mass around a black hole, which ended up giving birth to the image of black holes we see and know today. Nolan's movie notably talks about black holes, and there's even a moment in the movie where Matthew McConaughey's character time travels through a black hole. And this, my friends, is impossible. He'd never get through it without being completely spaghettified. FYI, there is no amount of technology available today that can sustain taking someone through a black hole. It's still one of science's great mysteries. There is no shortage of movies titled Apocalypse Something but the movie Apocalypto surprises with the content of its plot. The 2006 release by director Mel Gibson is an attempt to portray the decline of the Mayan civilization. Don't get me wrong, the movie was praised for several reasons. Mel Gibson made sure to cast only Mexican-born actors for all the movie's most important roles. Oh, and he even made the extremely bold choice of writing the dialogues in the Yucatec Maya language. So kudos to Gibson for trying to keep it as authentic as possible. There's no way this movie could have been all in English, right? It would feel too fake. But historians have argued that the movie has some big mix-ups. Like, confusing traditional Maya and Aztec cultures is a big no-go. Also, they got some of the period architecture wrong, as certain types of buildings would only exist much later in the Mayan Empire. Other historians criticize the one-dimensional aspect of the Mayan culture that was portrayed in the movie, aka only the violent side of it. This slip-up does happen in movie making, especially when trying to portray civilizations we long lost contact with. For a story to interest its viewers, it needs to abide by some key rules, and one of the central rules of drama is conflict. This conflict can belong to a character's inner world or it can be exterior to it. As was the case in the plot of Amadeus, a brilliant production that tells part of Mozart's story. 
The story was inspired by an old play, and the plot comes from a rumor that Amadeus Mozart and Antonio Salieri, an Italian composer, didn't really get along. The story centers on the bitterness between the two men. During the entire movie, Mozart seems to be constantly frustrated by Salieri's cold shoulders. The movie shows a real-life episode when Mozart applied to teach music to a German princess. This actually did happen, and Mozart didn't get the job. Salieri did. But the movie tweaks this quite a bit and shows that Salieri went out of his way to make Mozart be denied the job. The movie gets one thing right. They were professional rivals. They were both talented musicians in search of praise and recognition. But no history book has ever documented that their clash was personal, and especially that Salieri conspired to take Mozart's life, like at the end of the movie. Some rumors even say they were friends, or at least supporters of each other's art. Now, even with all of this historical inconsistency, Mozart was nominated for over 50 awards, and it managed to win 8 Academy Awards, including Best Picture. Tom Cruise is not just known for action-packed movies where he's running and jumping for the most part of it. In 2003, he was the lead in The Last Samurai, an epic tale that tells the story of an American man who is called to train Japanese people against a samurai rebellion that took place in 1877. In this movie, some of the facts and characters are real, but the relationships between them are not. The backstory might be true, in the late 1800s, Japan was going through a modernization period where there were samurai who were against it. Katsumoto, aka the last samurai, did exist. But here's where it starts to get off track. There are no records of him befriending a foreign officer like in the movie. Cruz's character didn't exist in the way the film portrays. Rather, it was probably based on a French officer who went to Japan to train their official army. So yes, we can say the screenwriter took their liberties to fabricate what he thought was a more compelling story. Biopics are a cinematic world all in themselves. When the movie Bohemian Rhapsody came out, people rushed to the cinemas to get a peep behind the scenes of Freddie Mercury's life. But soon enough, the movie received strong criticisms for its timeline inconsistencies. Queen lovers who lived through the 70s know that the world-famous song We Will Rock You was recorded in 1977 and not in the 80s like the movie suggests. The film also makes it seem like Queen had broken up before the iconic benefit concert at Wembley Stadium. It frames the occasion as a band reunion. But this is very far from the truth. Many band members were working on solo projects, but they hadn't broken up at the time. Other than that, the movie thrives at showing bits of the band's creative processes that the audience can't help but wish were true. Unfortunately, a lot of these moments were fictionalized and also downplayed the importance of other band members other than Freddie. One thing is true, though. Freddie was truly a cat person.